My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So will it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of the night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you must also be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. Well, I'll begin the new church year with one small critique. And the critique is I wish that the gospel included the verse just before the ones we heard. And uh, if you look at the gospels, they are divided into what we call pericopes, little segments. And uh, this particular gospel, when you look in the scripture, does include verse 36, which really gives a beautiful framework to the entire gospel that we just heard. So verse 36 states the following. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. And then goes on to talk about in the days of Noah and so on. And as we... uh, Look at the uh, gospel, all the readings really today. Begin the new season of Advent today. Just a few simple thoughts. Advent's really a very simple season. A few simple thoughts. That verse that I added, that verse that I added really calls us to one simple thing. Stay alert. That's what it calls us to. Stay alert. And... uh, all through the scripture, we often hear about revelation. We hear about the, the end of the world. And genu- generally, it's always uh, in a very veiled language. It's always left as a mystery. No specific days and times and events. Actually, we're even warned, don't look for specific days, times, and events. And Jesus, who is God, knows every detail of the plan of salvation. And uh, in In the uh, gospel, he makes it clear that not even the sun knows the hour. Well, that's one of those points that we don't really take so literally. It's really more of an intensifier. And it's an intensifier. Why? To highlight the point to his disciples and to highlight the point to his apostles, to highlight the point to you and me today, stay alert. Be ready. You don't know. Stay alert. Staying alert is always important. I will not ask how alert anybody was after turkey dinner on Thursday, you know. We usually kind of lull off to sleep a little bit, huh? I won't ask how alert we were if you stayed out shopping all night, and I will not ask who did that. I did it once and vowed never to do it again. And uh, you might not be too alert. And if you really think being alert is very important, and. You know, if if you drive on the thruway, we have the overhead signs, and very often it says, stay alert. Exact same words. And we have the rumble strips. If you start veering off, it kind of wakes you up. Stay alert. Well, spiritually, the season of Advent is like that rumble strip or that overhead sign. 
Stay alert. Wake up. What is it that you need to stay alert about? Secondly, if we really look at this gospel, it reminds us that there's an order to life, that life is ordered in a certain direction. And, and that direction is eternal life. Verses 37, 38, and 39 of the gospel that we, we heard reminds us to orientate our life towards eternal life. And it, it, and it says it in a maybe a veiled way. It talks about the importance of eating and drinking or the importance of, of, of marriage and taking a husband, finding a wife. These, these earthly things, which are very good in and of themselves, but the, the reminder is do not be consumed by them. If the earthly eclipses our direct focus on eternal life, uh, we're going to be in trouble. And what is it that we're really called to do is to once again question, are we aiming towards the kingdom of heaven? Many, many retreats over the course of my life that I've given, you know, I've, I've asked our teenagers in particular, are you orientating your life in that direction? And very often I've gotten the answer, well, I don't think I'm good enough to get into heaven, but I, I think I'm good enough to make it to purgatory, so that's what I'm aiming for. It's purgatory. And uh, I suppose we could have worse problems, but I said, you know, there's a problem with that. If, if you aim for heaven and you fall a little short, you'll end up in purgatory. If you aim for purgatory and you fall a little short, <laughs> you know, you better like it warm. Uh, <laughs> you know, what is the real aim of our life? Are we aiming towards eternal life? Is that really the, the aim, the focus? Are we on that direct track? You know, I don't know about you how often you fly. I don't like to fly. I do it, but I don't like to fly. Uh, I will do anything to take a direct flight. I do not like layovers. I do not like changing planes. I don't like any of that stuff. Direct, nonstop. That's really the call of the gospel today, is that direct, nonstop, that uh, focus to be towards the kingdom of heaven. So this Advent, first of all, stay alert. Secondly, this Advent, focus on eternal life directly. Third, find God in the ordinary events of life. If we look at the gospel today, we hear of ordinary events of life, a couple guys working out in the field doing their farm work, ordinary event of life, maybe not for you or for me, but for many. And uh, we hear of two ladies doing housework, you know, ordinary events of life for us all. God is reminding us to see him in the ordinary. And how often do we miss seeing him in the ordinary because we are convinced it's got to be the extraordinary. A story that I've shared with you, my very first day in the parish some three years ago was a story about my nephew, my younger one, he's now 25. At the time he was probably about four, he was a little guy. And we were all having dinner at my parents' home and we were sitting at the kitchen table and Christopher, as little kids will sometimes do, you know, he found it uh, amusing to take his hand and push it up against my nose just like this. And, uh, you know, the first time he did it, we all laughed. It was amusing. You know, the second time he did it, I uh, found it slightly less charming. <laughs> and uh, somewhere around the third or the fourth time, I started asking him to stop doing that. <laughs> And somewhere, probably around try number 10 or 12, I lost my patience. I said, Christopher, will you please stop doing that? And he looked at me straight in the eye, as serious as anything, and said, but Uncle Leo, it's just the baby coming out of me. <laughs> you know. And my mother immediately replied, there's going to be a homily on this one. <laughs> you know. And uh, the conversation at the table turned immediately to, well, how do we allow our faith to come right out of us so beautifully, so naturally, huh? Find God in the ordinary. 
I think the gospel today is reminding us don't, don't look for those extraordinary events. And certainly, as Paul reminds us, don't, don't get involved in the orgies, the drunkenness, the promiscuity, lust, rivalry, jealousy. Don't get rooted in those things. But look for God in the ordinary. So this event, sorry, this Advent, uh, three simple things. Stay alert. Focus on eternal life. Look for God in the ordinary. And don't delay doing it. The basic message of this gospel is we don't know the day or the hour. And really, the good Lord is calling us, don't postpone whatever it is you would like to do. I don't know if you are like I am, but I can procrastinate on an awful lot of things. And uh, Advent's calling us, don't postpone, don't procrastinate, but do. So pick one thing, maybe. We have four full weeks of Advent this year. We're not gypped. Sometimes we, we get gypped on that fourth week. We have four full weeks this year. Pick one thing to do. You know, that one thing may be uh, to finally get to confession after a long time. Don't postpone it. Do it. In addition to the regular Saturday schedule on Thursday nights, 5 to 7, we're going to be here hearing confession, keeping on the tradition of keeping the light on, as the bishop calls it. Parish penance service, December 13th, Tuesday night. Don't postpone. Do that. Or maybe, maybe we need to apologize to someone, or maybe we need to, you know, accept forgiveness, sorry, grant forgiveness that has been asked for. You know, don't, don't postpone that. If that's something you need to do to either ask for forgiveness or to grant it, do it in these coming four weeks. You know, maybe it's prayer. You know, I, I wish I had that half hour to stop at the Adoration Chapel. You know, don't postpone it. You got four weeks. Try to build that into at least one evening, one day of the week. You know, at the doors of the church, we have the Advent prayer books. You know, take one. Don't postpone the prayer. It's a simple little reflection for each day, a beautiful thing to hold on to. You know, maybe it's, it's learning about our faith and say, gee, I wish I knew more. Don't postpone that. Do something. This Tuesday, Bishop Gross will be here to uh, give us an Advent night of recollection on our Blessed Mother as the disciple of our Lord Jesus. So don't postpone learning something about your faith. Maybe it's some work of charity. Maybe it's some work of service, something... We wanted to get around to, but we haven't done. Take the words of the gospel seriously today. Do not postpone, because we do not know the day or the hour that the Son of Man will come.